and welcome to UC Today. My name is Kieran Devlin and today's session is the Big UC Partner Update for Puzzle. I'm delighted to be joined by Richard Holland, Director and VP of Channel Sales at Puzzle. Richard, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Before we explore exactly the trends and challenges impacting Puzzle's partners right now, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself, Richard, and your journey with Puzzle? Sure, yeah. So um, as you kindly introduced me there, I'm Richard Holland, the VP of Channel at Puzzle. And I'm responsible for a, a team of five people who look after all of our go-to-market partnerships. So these are partners that either uh, resell or refer or work with us in some way with our go-to-market across all of our key countries, which are the UK, uh, all of the Nordics and the Netherlands. Perfect. So you have a very holistic overview of what exactly those trends and challenges that are facing your guys' partners right now? So can you please give us some detail on exactly that? What are those big trends and challenges impacting your partners right now? Sure. Um, so a lot of our partners have kind of a background in voice and UC, and they're kind of expanding into the contact center, CX, digital, AI kind of world in more recent times. And that's kind of a, a great opportunity for them as well, but potentially also a bit of a challenge because the way that unified communications and contact center are bought and sold is actually quite different. You've got different buying personas, different kind of decision criteria, etc. So it's a bit of a step change to what they're, they've sort of been used to. So, you know, we're doing the simple stuff. We're investing a lot in partner enablement and training portals, etc. for our partners. Uh, but also in uh, marketing campaigns and co-branded assets that they can use as they make that transition into this new market. And I think one of the things that uh, Puzzle has as a kind of differentiator in that place is we are very focused on Europe, we're, ex we're exclusively focused on a few European countries, and then within that focused on a few kind of key verticals, which means we have a very high degree of customer intimacy and understanding of those markets. And so we're able to furnish our partners with very localized go-to-market playbooks that will help them to stand out in a, in a crowded market. So that's, I think, one of the big challenges uh, that they face. But the other one, and uh, it's kind of predictable, and that is the kind of the AI arms race, as I call it, that is happening at the moment in our industry. Uh, not just traditional contact center and UC sellers, but we're seeing entrants from all sorts of different uh, parts of the market, from CRM vendors, from dedicated AI companies to uh, large systems integrators and consultancies, all want to, racing to have something interesting to say and some, some solution to produce around AI, particularly generative AI. Uh, and there's a huge interest from customers. You know, everyone can see that that's the direction of travel. I often sort of say internally that I think, you know, the kind of the winners and losers, both uh, personally and professionally in terms of like you as individuals and as companies over the kind of next decade will be determined by people's willingness and ability to adopt and embrace generative AI. But there's still a lot of hesitance to actually adopt it fully within customer bases because of the complexity of integration, and also we're in a tough economic climate, so there's a great degree of uncertainty and, and customers really want to see a very clear and certain ROI in, in any sort of tech decisions that they make before they go ahead with them. And so what we're doing is we're kind of simplifying the AI integration process, ensuring that our solutions are extremely compatible across diverse tech stacks, different infrastructure uh, providers, AI frameworks, etc. We're also emphasizing data security and regulatory compliance so that particularly in vital sectors like uh, financial services and government. Uh, and this is really important for our partners to be able to show that kind of clear ROI um, for their customers and support them in, in making kind of confident decisions. Right? Um, and the other thing that we're doing is that we're kind of evaluating the use of generative AI across our whole portfolio. So Puzzle isn't just a CCAS vendor. Actually, we, we like to talk about ourselves as kind of a customer engagement platform, right? So we've got traditional voice, we've got digital self-service and AI, 
we've got uh, workforce management, we've got case management, all these different products. And often what happens when a company grows like that, much like Puzzle, is that although they've got these different products and they've integrated to them to some degree, um, they are still separate and distinct products. So what a lot of our uh, immediate roadmap is, is actually trying to combine that um, into a single unified platform, but also look at more quick wins uh, in terms of the use of generative AI. So for example, uh, agent augmentation, instead of setting generative AI loose on your customers to answer queries, but actually how can we empower the agent to be more effective, more efficient, more quick, uh, and deliver a better CX for customers in their interactions by using generative AI. Now that will deliver a kind of more immediate impact for, for customers. I think that's really interesting. And before we move on to a, more generally you guys' product roadmap and the kinds of features and benefits that partners can expect, just very quickly, I'm, I'm really curious about your, your these conversations that you're having with partners about leveraging AI and obviously it's, they feel like <laughs> And the, the, there's a vast gulf between there's the the, the cultural shift, how the, the the level of cost versus investment, and the data and security aspect. And I'm really curious when you're having these conversations, is it outlining the ROI specifically, or is it often just highlighting tangible use cases where um, examples where that has helped, whether you know um, more generally in the broader industry or in other partners? Do you do you find just conveying the impact of use cases has been really invaluable with these discussions? Yeah, definitely, because of what I mentioned earlier about um, the uh, sort of difficulty of adoption at the moment and the slight uncertainty around this is storytelling and use case driven uh, sales is definitely highly effective to, to get customers kind of over that hump of uncertainty be able to demonstrate how other peers within their industry have used this effectively. Uh, and as I said, that's something that we're able to do quite effectively because we focus on a small number of key segments and have a number of customers that work with us for a very long time in those segments that have maybe started out their journey with us using uh, you know, old on-premise uh, content center technology and spreadsheets for workforce management and absolutely nothing to do with AI in-house all the way through that sort of journey to being a more, you know, if you think about the sort of the change journey of being uh, more empowered by AI using a cloud-based platform, using um, a single, a, a proper workforce management pl platform. So yeah, I think helping customers understand relevant use cases, particularly from their peers, is, is really key for that. Perfect. Moving on to Puzzle's product roadmap over the next year or so, can you please give us some details? You, know, you alluded to earlier on the, the Gen AI solution uh, you were working on, but what are some of the other features and updates and products you guys are working on that partners can get excited about? That's a good question. So I like to uh, think about it in terms of two categories, right? Um, you've got self-service and then you've got assisted CX. So that's assisted CX being your more traditional voice contact center area, right? And our roadmap is kind of split across those two key areas. So when it comes to self-service, well, obviously AI developments are a key part of that. Um, but again, although we are evaluating and we have a, a team internally at Puzzle that are, are looking at uh, how we should be using generative AI across the entire stack to make sure that we're ahead of the game when it comes to that. Actually, if you look at our near-term roadmap, it's things that can put power into the hands of business users to deliver a really quick return on investment. So for example, um, instead of using Gen AI to answer customer queries directly, a little risky, can work for some, and we've all seen news reports of a, a company recently that used Gen AI to completely wipe out their contact center. Um, but that's not for everybody. A lot of customers are um, uh, not, not that far along their change curve, right? Um, so instead, perhaps we can use generative AI to train traditional chatbots more efficiently. So normally training a chatbot is quite a time-consuming and painful process, right? That requires a specific skill set, someone that um, has language skills, business skills, and maybe even in some cases, depending on the, the chatbot like development, skills as well. 
but we can use Gen AI to think of all of the various different ways that a customer might phrase a certain query that relates to a certain intent uh, very quickly. So we can use it to very quickly train and test chatbots. And actually that means that that training can then be do, done by uh, a simple business user. Uh, and that delivers a really clear and concise and quick ROI. Um, and we're kind of differentiating, differentiating our approach, I suppose, by focusing on user-friendly interfaces, uh, minimal tech complexity that, that can really help our customers. Because a lot of the customers that Puzzle work with are kind of mid-market, kind of local enterprise type of customers um, that really want to see quick returns. And they don't want to be completely reliant on their IT team either. They want their IT team to be there to empower them and support the business, but not to have this enormous tech empire that um, you know the business users have, have no uh, visibility or control over. So that's kind of on the self-service side. When we look at the assisted CX side, so the more traditional contact center side, uh, as I mentioned earlier, a big part of that is agent assist. So a lot of companies at the moment are looking at, well, we've got, uh, we use knowledge bases to empower agents with information that they need to answer queries and handle situations, right? Um, but can we use generative AI to create knowledge bases that are more on the fly in real time that are more specifically related to the customer's query to really speed up that time to resolution for agents. Um, so a lot of people are looking at that at the moment. What we're thinking about is how we can actually import the customer's own data into these large language models. Um, and so that they, the information being produced is as relevant as possible. And I think we've got a bit of a competitive advantage in doing this actually, again, because of our, our focus on certain markets and the intimacy and understanding we have of those markets. But there's also a really great opportunity for our partners because what you have to do with these large language models is continually iterate and optimize them. And so many of our, our partners have been working with their customers for 10, 15, 20 years in some cases. Uh, and really have a great deal of understanding of their business. So they're in a good position to add value to their customers by helping them to optimize these models. So I think that's really exciting. Uh, and then the last thing is, uh, as I mentioned, that kind of um, puzzle ID. So providing a seamless, unified experience across our entire portfolio. Um, and this obviously has a big impact on agent experience, right? So having a single login across all platforms, but it also uh, enables joint reporting. So our partners can assist their customers in making more data-driven strategic decisions rather than kind of silo tactical decisions by taking data from all different sources, all different interaction channels, all into a single place. Um, and it'll also make it easier for our partners to integrate Puzzle into other ecosystems, back, you know, proprietary third-party back office systems, et cetera, as well which is very much in the skill set of many of our partners. So I think that's, again, a great opportunity for partners to consult with their customers. So that's pretty exciting. And one, one last question before I let you go, Richard. I'm really curious what you alluded to there about Puzzle really focusing on interoperability and all these integrations with, with third-party platforms or ecosystems. And I'm wondering, is that something that you're seeing your partners really express interest in? Is this Because maybe from specifically the vendor side, I've noticed over the last year, this is something that their, their customers are really wanting as this goes on, as more and more platforms and the, that ease of use for not just IT uh, teams, as you alluded to, but also just the, the average business user who might not be as tech savvy as with all, all the new solutions. Is that something you've, you've really noticed on and you guys have really centered on that level of interoperability with all different ecosystems? Yeah, it is. It's, it's very important because I think if you look at the market as a whole, that's the direction of travel increasingly, uh, particularly in slightly larger mid-market local enterprise type of customers, the IT leaders will make a quite strategic decision on which infrastructure player they want to invest into, be that you know, Microsoft or Google or AWS or what have you. 
Uh, and then oftentimes will orient a lot of their tech stack around working effectively with that. So let's say you were a Microsoft house, you're all in on Microsoft, you're using Microsoft 365, you're using Teams, you're using them for AI, a lot of your applications are hosted on Azure. Um, it's then uh, highly efficient to have software solutions that integrate easily into those platforms, right? So that have uh, good Teams integration for the, for the UC, say. Um, with present sharing, etc. So that's a really big focus for us. And I think there's, there's two strategies you can have as a vendor. You can either try to be the platform of choice, right, and, and own as much as possible of the tech stack and grab, land grab as much as you can, or you can be one that integrates easily and freely into other solutions so that um, because you're, you're, it's easier to work with you to, no matter what, sort of uh, tech stack the customer has. And I think we're in that second camp, right? Um, we're very good at what we do, but Puzzle's quite a focused organization. So we know what we're good at. We're good at CX, um, but we leave the other stuff to, to other people and we want to be as easy to integrate um, and that interoperability, yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you for your time, Richard. I've really enjoyed today's session. Um, so yeah, thank you for being here today. That's a pleasure, thank you. And if you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share on social media, and we'll see you next time. I've been Kim Devlin of UC Today. Thanks for watching.